Greetings friends, welcome again to my game room. You know, way back in 1890, a British archaeologist whose name was William Matthew Flinders Petrie, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, he was digging around in Egypt and he discovered the remnants of an ancient game. And he described that in his papers. It wasn't until 1910 that another British archaeologist, whose name was Henry Carter, discovered what appeared to be a complete set of the same game. And now that game was called Hounds and Jackals. The reason it was called Hounds and Jackals was because the pegs that were used to play the game, apparently, were in the shape of hound heads and jackal heads. Now, some of the later boards that were discovered were decorated with a palm tree design. And so some references to the game call it the palm tree game. Uh, it's also sometimes called the game of 58 holes, which is a little bit of a misnomer because there's really 59 holes in the game. But despite those various games, Hounds and Jackals seems to be one of the more popular names. Now, this complete game set that Henry Carter discovered was in the tomb of Amenhotep. It has helped to identify a lot of tomb paintings and a lot of other artifacts that refer to the game. It was apparently very popular with the upper echelon of the uh, royal court and prominent citizens in ancient Egypt. The game was also sometimes called Shen uh, because the hieroglyph that is often depicted at the very last hole in the course of the game uh, is the Shen hieroglyph which represents uh, eternal life or eternity. The game spread throughout the Middle East uh, through trade routes and so on, so examples have been found elsewhere. An aspect very common to all of these uh, is the depiction of certain holes uh, by rings and uh, the inclusion of hieroglyphs in specific spots around the board and the number of pegs that have been found with the boards. The boards themselves come in a lot of different shapes and sizes and materials and kind of indicates that there were regional variations or maybe it changed over the years. Actual codified rules to the game of course are lost to history as with most of these ancient games but the uh, historians of games and researchers have come up with a pretty standard set of rules uh, for the game. Um, primarily two versions that uh, I will explain here in just a second that are most often found uh, if you would uh, do some research. So let's take a quick look at those rules and then I will come back to wrap up at the end of the video. This version is based on rules developed around 2017 by Dmitry Skiryuk, a Russian game historian, plus some variations suggested by Daniel Thibault, a Canadian computer scientist and game researcher. This form of the game is strictly a race between players based on the random results of a set of stick dice. There is almost no interaction between the players. What little decision making there is, is in how the players apply their die results. Each player receives a set of five pegs, either red or yellow. The game begins with each player placing one peg in their start space as shown here. The rest of the pegs begin the game off the board. The path of movement for the two players is shown by the colored lines. The pegs never move backwards on the path, but only towards the goal. The significance of various marked spaces and connections on the board are explained later. On their turn, players toss all four stick dice, and the player with the lowest result goes first, moving that first peg accordingly on the path. Then the second player moves according to their first result. After this move, players take turns tossing the stick dice and moving their pegs. The active player takes up the four sticks in their fist, holding them vertically a few inches off the playing surface. They open their hand to release the sticks. How these sticks land indicates the movement available for that turn. If only one stick is flat side up, the player can move one peg one space. As one would expect, two, three, or four sticks flat side up indicates a move of two, three, or four. If none of the sticks is flat side up, this is considered a result of five. 
when a peg passes or ends its move on a circled hole e or g on the path the player immediately places a new peg into their starting position at hole a on their side of the board if that starting hole is already occupied nothing happens in addition to starting a new peg on the path the player immediately gets another turn another toss of the stick dice the resulting move can apply to any peg they have in play not just the peg that triggered this bonus turn. Pegs cannot pass another peg except by shortcuts between D and C or B and F. If a peg lands in hole B, then that peg slides immediately to hole F, as shown by the lines on the board. The same thing happens in reverse. If a peg lands in hole F, then that peg slides back to hole B, as shown by the lines on the board. Likewise, the links between holes C and D have the same effect. Hole H can only be reached by exact count of the die result. When a peg reaches hole H, the player removes the opponent's peg that is furthest back on a path and keeps it for the rest of the game. If this means that the opponent now has no pegs on the board, they are allowed to place a new peg on their start space immediately. As soon as this is accomplished, the peg in hole H is removed from the board and returned to its owner. On some of the original game boards, this hole is labeled with a Shen hieroglyph, which represents protection and eternity. Each peg that makes it off the end of the path, exiting at Shen, will then re-enter the path at A, as before, on a future turn. Pegs not captured by the opposing player continue to be re-entered in this way and make the circuit again and again. The ultimate goal of the game is to remove all five of the opponent's pegs and still have at least one of one's own pegs on the board in the end. Version 2 Each player receives a set of five pegs, red or yellow, and the game begins with the pegs off the board. This version of the game only uses three of the stick dice. As usual, a flat side up counts one, and if none of the sticks land flat side up, this is considered a result of five. So there is no move of four. The path of movement for the two players is shown here. Pegs never move backwards on the path, but only towards the goal. And the goal is to reach the last five points on the path, your home row, as shown here. Reaching the empty holes in these last five positions must be by exact count, but the order in which it is done has no importance. A result of five is required to start a peg at A on the path to home. Any result can be applied to any peg once they are on the path. When any new peg is started on a path, the player immediately redrops the stick dice and moves that peg according to this new result. Only one peg may be put into a hole, if no move is possible because of this rule, or if the die result doesn't allow a move to an empty hole in the home row, the turn is forfeited. Unlike version 1, pegs may pass each other on the path. Also, in an interesting twist, if a player can't make a move, the opponent may add the unused result from that player to their own next die result. If a peg lands in hole B, then that peg slides immediately to hole F, as shown by the lines on the board. Same thing happens in reverse. Likewise, the links between hole C and D have the same effect. If a peg ends its move in a circled hole E or G, they immediately get another turn, another toss of the stick dice. The resulting move can apply to any peg they have in play, not just the peg that triggered this bonus turn. The game ends immediately when either player moves their final peg into their home row. So that's the game of Hounds and Jackals, also sometimes called the Palm Tree Game, also called Shen, also called 58 Holes, R.C. Bell called it Dogs and Jackals. Um, it's all the same game. We offer a copy as part of our Peg Pastime series, The Games of Ancient Egypt. And uh, so you can find the link to buy your own copy here in the show notes. I uh, appreciate it too if you would subscribe to the channels here. And uh, if you click that little notification bell, uh, we'll send you a message every time a new video is posted so you can keep track of all these 
ancient and traditional games, as well as some newer games that uh, I'll review here on the channel. So whether you play Hounds and Jackals or some other ancient game or some modern game, play by yourself, play with a group, I'll tell you what, be sure to play every game.